Can you all see my slides? Uh, can, yes. am I, uh, can you hear my voice? Am I yes. clear? Yes. Yes. Right. Okay. All right. So I guess without wasting any time, I will dive into my presentation. All right. Go ahead, please. Thank you. Right. Okay, so the topic of my uh, presentation today is actually on assessing learning in the new normal, challenges and learning points for the future. So the presentation content will include nine, uh, nine discussions or rather aspects, okay? So I will begin with the introduction, obviously, and then I'll proceed to explain what is assessing learning. Why is assessing learning important? And then I will describe a bit on assessing learning approaches. And then I'll proceed on to assessing learn, how assessing learning helps instructors. And then I will describe a bit on assessing learning in the new normal. What are the challenges of assessing learning in the new normal? What are our challenges of assessing learning in the new normal? And lastly, before I end, we will, I will end my presentation with some learning points that are uh, based on the experiences that uh, we have been having at uh, Unimap. Okay. Right. I'll start the introduction. Okay. The COVID 19 coronavirus was first detected in December 2019 in Wuhan, China, with its first case detected in Hubei, China, on 17 November 2019. I think it's always aware uh, as the COVID-19 spread rapidly, the World Health Organization declared the COVID-19 outbreak to be a global pandemic on the 11th of March, 2020. And there were unexpected or very ad hoc orders from many governments around the world to follow lockdown. And the different phases of the MC were actually created or directly affected many businesses and organization systems. And of course, including the education sector. The as of 24th of April 2022, our country Malaysia has recorded 4,431,73 total COVID-19 cases, whereby 74,000 plus are active cases, 4 million have recovered and 35,499 deaths. So the government of Malaysia initiated the movement control NCO, which was effective on 18th of March 2020. And ever since that date till today, the MC order was extended multiple times and has at times switched to either the Conditional Movement Control Order, CMCO, the Recovery Movement Control Order, RMCO, or the Enhanced Movement Control Order, EMCO, which actually affected the education sector quite uh, impactfully. I mean, quite, I wouldn't say badly, but it put us on our feet, having to actually transform the face-to-face -face, uh, orientation into fully online. All right. Similarly, all academic institutions in Malaysia had to implement campus closures and turn to their online systems to continue to supply a high quality education service while reducing contact. We saw how the education sector immediately tried to adapt to the emergency remote learning. Classes were held online via video conferencing tools, Assignments were submitted online. Reliance on terminal exams were minimized and alternative assessments were introduced to ensure the continuity of learning throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, when schools and institutions of higher learning had to shut down at the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, more than 1.5 billion enrolled students of all ages from all around the globe experienced interruption of education which equals nearly 90% of the global student population. Now, this presentation actually focuses on the challenges in assessing remote or online learning, ODL, in the nation education context, and lessons learned, which will hopefully provide some future guidance on refining some of these approaches. Now, what is assessing learning? Assessment is a systemic, systematic process of gathering, interpreting and acting upon data related to student learning and experience for the purpose of developing a deep understanding of what students know, understand, and can do with their knowledge as a result of the educational experience, meaning what they actually 
learn in the classroom, whether it's actually face-to-face -face or whether it's actually remote. The process culminates when assessment results are used to improve subsequent learning. Subsequent learning sorry. Learning takes place in students' state where it is invisible to others. This means that learning must be assessed through performance. What students know, can do, and understand with the learning. Assessment information is used by the teacher to adjust their teaching strategies and by students to adjust their learning strategies. Assessment is an ongoing process aimed at understanding and improving student learning. Assessing students' performance can involve assessments that are formal or informal, high or low stakes, anonymous or public, individual or collective. Now, why is assessing learning important? Why do we do assessments? You know, most of us, are, I'm sure, are educators or instructors, and I think we find ourselves most of the time testing our students to see how much they know, or what can they do, or how well they can actually apply what we have actually taught them. So that is why we do assessment. It's actually to find out what students know can do and how well they can do. That means we are testing them or finding out in terms of their knowledge, their skills, and of course, performance. We also need to find out how students go about the task of doing their work. We give them a task, how do they do it? Because each student actually addresses each task in their own way. To find out how students feel about their work, whether they're motivated, or are they demotivated, we have some students who put in 100% effort and 101 effort, and we have some students actually giving even zero effort. So that is why assessment, assessing learning is important, so that we as instructors keep a check on how we actually teach our students, or how we impart our knowledge to you know, students that are of different learning abilities, different competency levels, and different intelligence levels. Now, in our, before COVID, I guess most of us were very familiar with, I mean, I will talk in terms of uh, my university and my center, we were mainly using diagnostic or summative actually. You know, we always had final exams at the end. Come COVID and now, which is already post COVID, we find ourselves having to actually move towards formative. That means changing all our assessments to actually authentic assessments. So we are trying, now what is happening in my university is that we are actually moving from summative assessment to more formative so that students are actually graded as they go along. And that is a challenge actually, since most of us were actually, how to say, trained or maybe have been so used to providing summative assessments for our students and to actually assess our courses. Right, when we assess learning, it actually helps instructors, educators, or even administrators to design, modify programs or courses to better promote learning and student success. It helps us to provide common definitions and benchmarks for students' ability that, that enable, to act, enable us to act more coherently and effectively to promote student learning. It also helps us to provide feedback, guidance, and monitoring to students as to help them better plan and execute their educational programs. Now, how does assess learning helps? When we assess students' learning, we actually, we are given, how to say, an insight into 10, 10, 10 student learning characteristics. Okay, we actually get to evaluate or get to observe the ability differences of the students that we have. The type of learning styles that our students may be more, to say more, more familiar or more comfortable with, to see the self-efficacy of each student, to see what interests students, and to see what are the goals that orientate students in order for them to actually uh, embrace the learning process. Assessment or assessing learning also actually gives us an insight into motivational characteristics of our learners. It tells us how our learners perform. It also informs us of the kind of skills that maybe need to be honed 
you know, among our students. It also tells us how much of content knowledge actually our learners have absorbed and whether or not our students have the ability to apply content knowledge. And with the information that we get from the assessments, it actually helps us to improve the focus of our teaching because we can actually see what are the weaknesses, what are the strengths, which areas that need to be focused on, which areas that we can actually modify or change or remove. Also tells, it also tells us uh, where to focus, you know, in terms of students' strengths and weaknesses. You know, what motivates them? What kind of uh, content or what kind of uh, teaching approach? Or maybe um, what kind of uh, uh, information that actually uh, piques the student's interest. So this is why assessing learning is actually very critical. And of course, once we identify number one and number two, it actually helps us to plan, plan our program, our courses to make it more effective, to make it more, how to say, uh, tuned towards the needs of the learners. And of course, in the end, in the job market. And then, of course, you know, once when we achieve one, two, and three, it makes it easy for us to report to the parents and stakeholders, not only on the performance of the students, but rather how, uh, how effective are the courses that we're actually, let to say, offering to the client or to our students. All right. Now we come to the main area of the presentation. I mean, I think we were all. Assessing learning before COVID was much, how to say, accessible because we could see students, okay? It was mainly face-to-face. -face. You know, we could, we, it, was, it was easy to actually assess. But now, in COVID and post-COVID, I think I have not seen my students for two years since 2020. It's all been online engagement. So how do we assess their learning? How do we know that students actually understand what is being taught? I mean, when you ask in an online class, you get answers, yes. You know, but sometimes I feel I'm talking to the wall because you have like 35 or 40 students in a class, but when you have one or two that's actually responding and you actually have to call one by one to make sure that, you know, they're actually listening or they're not sleeping or they're just, you know, there, uh, I mean, how to say, they may not be looking at the computer, just that it's on to indicate that, you know, their presence is there. So how can we effectively engage assessment for learning with our students when learning is mediated by technology, like what we are having now? And when we don't see or hear our students as much as we used to, oh, you know, when in a face-to-face -face engagement, we normally can see students' expression, you know, whether they're tired or whether they are interested, whether they are confused, because the expression and their behavior tells us a lot in the classroom. But when it comes to online engagement, how much do we know? Half the time, the students don't switch on their cameras, mainly because of data usage as well. So these are the main challenge that we actually are facing in assessing learning in the new normal. That's the student's part. And what about the educator's part? I can still recall when it was MCO, it was a sudden change to actually start looking up on online tools. Uh, what kind of platform could we use, you know, to actually start our classes because classes still had to go on. You know, there was no pause, there was no holiday or no break for actually any of us to actually sit and discuss or plan. Everything was to be done very promptly, very swiftly, very ad hocly. So there were no time to prep, prepare. I would say in my center, we were actually, how to say, trial and error. We were just trying to use as many uh, tools that we could, trying to learn. And then the best part was most of us were actually locked in our homes. So it's actually quite a challenge. I mean, teaching was a challenge. And then what more having to actually transform the summative face-to-face -face assessments into online assessments into authentic assessments whereby we had to actually convert convert all the assessments into online mode that was a big challenge as well and there were no clear policy and guidelines so 
how could we support learning? How were we to execute accountability? How were we to provide certification? And how we could ensure that the students would progress, you know, from one level to another so that they would actually go on to the next level. Now, Hebrichi et al. outlines three major components and related issues in an online education environment. All right. I think most of us are familiar with components for any uh, assessment of learning. All right. We always have the part of the student, have the part of the instructors, and we have the part of the content development. And of course, in order to get all three, we need the support of the institution. So what challenges did we face? Obviously, we had to change the rule from a face-to-face -face teacher centered or a student-centered approach to totally remote. You know, students were not in the campus. They were online and they were far away from the university. And how were we ready to actually change or how to say move or transform from face-to-face -face classes to online, to fully online, 100%, having to learn new technologies in a very short span of time, having to actually um, conduct, prepare lesson materials that we could actually share with students. And I would say in Unimed, there were cases where students did not have the proper infrastructure or the proper tools. Some did not have internet connectivity, you know, I remember we were having to resort to posting actually uh, assessments and assignments to certain students so that they were able to actually conduct the assessment. You know, how much time instructors needed to prepare? How was our town management changing? And what kind of teaching styles that we had to actually adopt? It was on the part of ours as instructors, not only designing lessons, designing exams, but actually also on our readiness how ready will we in, you know, in having to, to adopt you know, online technology? I mean, I would say I was quite lucky that in my center, we had quite a few, a number of actually very young, innovative instructors who were willing to train the senior members like myself and a few others on how to use tools. But I was, sometimes I would think, what about other institutions like schools, you know, uh, kindergartens, primary, you know, where they did not have such access or such knowledge or such training. How, how were the lessons, how were the students and how were the teachers, how, how were the education going on? And what about on the learners aspect? You know, what were they expecting from us? You know, were they ready as well, just like us? And what kind of learning styles? I mean, you have the seven multiple intelligence or the, you know, whether that's audio learners, whether they're kinetic, whether they're visual. So would online learning actually cater to all those varying learning styles? And what about students' technical skills? I mean, we have instructors also grappling with having to use technology in order to teach. What about students? There were no time to actually assess because everything was just ad hoc and it was implemented almost immediately. And it was also the self-isolation because everyone was on their own, away. I mean, us being in our homes, students, instructors, we were actually you know, having to deal with the problems with no discussions as how we would have in a normal face-to-face -face environment. And students' participation, you know, how many of them were really willing to participate? Or how many of them were there actually throughout the 40 minutes of class? Or some would just switch on their camera and they would, you know, just go away or sleep or, you know, things like that. And then, of course, you know, moving on from the instructor's perspective and the learner's perspective, we had the content development. Right, not only developing the notes or the course content syllabus, the learning outcomes. You now we had to actually create assessment that could be linked to the achieve of, to actually reflect the achievement of the learning outcomes that also supports the learning process. You now we had to modify our assignments, transform our assessments, and what about feedback? How how how? reliable or how effective were our feedback towards our students' learning? Were students actually benefiting from all the new, the new approaches that we had to uh, condone to in order to make sure that learning still continued despite the lockdown and despite the 
you know, being away from the university. And then, of course, we have the institution support whereby they need to give us infrastructure. They need to give us training in terms of student training, of course, instructor training, and then provide the technical and multimedia support in terms of internet connectivity, maybe provide more computer labs, laptops, and so on. I mean, that's, um, by its way, it's a, gen it's a, genera it's a, a generic uh, challenge that I think every institute around the world faces. My next slide, I want to share what we actually face at the center in the map. So of course, if you see the pyramid, the biggest concern was infrastructure. I think when we first had to transform uh, or change the shift into online mode, I think number one was internet connectivity. Because I was, our university was a dispersed campus, it's not uh, concentrated in one area. I mean, as I mean, for those who have come to our university, knows that the whole of the state called Perlis is actually Unimap. You can find uh, faculties uh, centers actually throughout the whole state. So we face problems with internet connectivity. Some areas we could assess online, but some couldn't because there was no internet access. And there were not enough computer labs being an engineering uh, university. You know, students needed to do a lot of uh, practical, a lot of lab work, and that all had to be converted into online, into simulations. And there was another thing that lacked. And then, of course, uh, we instructors also face coverage of learning outcomes. I mean, it was a challenge having to actually link our course outcomes, the learning outcomes, the program outcomes. And then changing the slippers or the modes of approaches of learning, topics were had, had to modify as well in order to suit the assessments or the, or the learning that we had to actually impart to the students. And again, I think I would say, even though we started reviewing our curriculum since March 2020, we are still doing it up to date and still finding a lot of challenge, especially in converting the assessments to authentic assessments calculating the SLT, making sure that each assessment doesn't exceed the SLT time. So it's actually still a challenge. Okay, that's on the part of the instructors. And then we have academic dishonesty, something which I learned from the students actually. I mean, when we get online assessments, of course we had time limit, we normally would use quizzes, you know, quizzes, sometimes online presentations, sometimes you give them take home tasks, but you know, when students submitted their, their work back, it was even, even though it was a one hour exam, we would actually find exact answers on the script. So academic dishonesty was very rampant in terms of plagiarism, in terms of students actually, because uh, like, I mean, when students were actually in their homes, I know they were Googling onto their internet to get the answers. But when you're back in the hostel, like now, though we don't have online classes, but students actually in the hostel, they actually sit with each other and do the test together. So this is one major problem that we are trying to actually address in our university at this moment. To see how to actually, that's why now emphasis is placed on not just using CA, but rather going towards CA. So that to actually minimize or totally wipe this academic dishonesty that exists among students. Of course, we as instructors, it's like what and how to teach. You know, you have things that you need to teach that you need to achieve within the 14 weeks so that they will achieve the learning outcome. But sometimes it's hard to achieve all of it because of the shift from final exams to alternative assessments. Enough to mention that sometimes it takes longer to actually finish the certain syllabus because of the online engagement. So this is something that we're still facing now. We, uh, we change and revise our content, I think almost per semester, learning from what happened in the previous one and you know, taking the good and leaving the bad so that you know, we hope to achieve a rather a more effective uh, method of approach and a more suitable content that would serve the online or hybrid blended uh, engagement. And of course, 
We also have problems with students being committed to submitting their assignments and attending online class. It was hard to actually, uh, how to say, get everyone involved. I mean, for languages, it was fine because our classes were small, 35. But in my center, we also have lectures where uh, a lecturer has to actually address students which are 150, 200 to 250, and some of them would say only 35 would attend. So these are some of the really very, very pressing uh, challenges that we had in assessing learning in the new one. It's just a sharing to show you what happened or what is happening and how we are trying to actually overcome. All right. In terms of infrastructure, so what we have done is actually, of course, being a public university, funds are always the major problem. So what we've done is actually, um, I think Unimap is actually quite fortunate because we are an engineering university. And we, in the past, of course, our students actually engage with a lot of industry for their internship and practical. So many industries actually came forward to give us support in terms of software, in terms of uh, uh, helping us to actually uh, come up with more computer labs, uh, enhance internet connectivity, provide funding, and also help us develop LMS systems. So now, actually, I think after two years, our learning management system in maps actually more enhanced, uh, more reliable, and it's actually, uh, it's actually quite complete uh, as how it was when we first started in 2020. All right, so even our internet connectivity has actually improved. Uh, the university actually had, uh, had actually, let us say, um, provided a lot of money actually to make sure that every distributed campus was actually uh, having internet connected for the students. All right. And then coverage of learning outcomes. So how do we actually align okay, or link the assessments that we have to create that are online friendly to the achievement of the learning outcomes? And, and also to ensure that the assessment and learning outcomes actually support the learning process. And it helps us to measure the degree of learning that the students are undergoing for each program and each course. So what we have done is actually we have encouraged a system-wide approach to professional learning within the boards and engagement with online professional learning networks as well to actually help us learn and adapt so that we are, we are aware what are the trends, what needs to be done. So this is what we have done in terms of uh, having to cover the ensure that we actually cover every learning outcome that we have for every program and course that we have at the end. Any questions so far? Okay, I was going on and on. <laughs> so just anything? You have done. All right, so I forgot to actually yeah. ask in between. I was just going on and yeah. on like a broken record. Yeah. Thank you so right. much. And uh, we are waiting for the, oh, you, 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 yeah, I still have last three, yeah, just on how that we address, what are the learning points that we, okay, that we actually, we are running out of time, time. As well. I had a special meeting. so this is the final actually, so, uh, in order to actually address academic, uh, dishonesty, we actually create sure. awareness, go ahead, please, yes, thank you, Dr. Sipinda, it's, uh, just one or two minutes more, to create awareness among students on academic integrity issues, you know, we tell them that what you can or not do, okay, Develop the ethics of the students through learning processes by incorporating in the curricular and co-curricular plans. We also actually uh, use more online presentation of proctored examinations, all right? And then in terms of what and how to teach shift from final exams to alternative assessments, we actually use research-based practices to collectively navigate online assessment, teaching and learning. So actually we encourage our staff to actually conduct researches on methods that we use in classes and so that we use it as a platform for self-improvement. Then lastly, how do we get our students committed to submit their assignments and attend online classes? We devise various follow up methods and faculty and department head, uh, which goes up to the high level so that students will be, how to say, forced and encouraged to attend online classes and submit their assessments. So actually I've uh, come to the end of my presentation. So if there's any questions or anything, yeah, I'll just leave it to the floor. Yes. Thank you for listening. <laughs> I hope you all found it interesting or just a sharing of uh, what 
experiences that we actually face at my center and being the head of the department is actually not easy having to you know move stuff towards the new normal way of teaching and assessing and learning yeah the new normal attacked us and then uh, we have to live you know in the new ways yes in in teaching 